Hey, what's up guys, Sir Eminon here, and welcome to another video. So it's been a while since my last upload, but I just got back from YCS Charlotte, which was an absolute blast of an event. I had a super awesome time, and I want to share with you guys the deck that I played for the main event, as well as a 3v3 side event that I actually played with uh, MBT and DZ, for all people. And that is going to be the Brave Dragon Link deck right here. And so I'll share with you guys, of course, the deck list and a tournament report afterwards. And if you guys are interested as to why I've been absent from YouTube for such a long time, I'll stay tuned to the very end of the video. We'll kind of discuss that a little bit more. But yeah, the deck itself was very, very strong. I didn't perform super well in the main event, but I think those are some circumstances that weren't as much to do with the list and more to do with other factors. Um, part of it being me misplaying, part of it being just a poor matchup, and another one just being straight up variant so that was out of my control. But again, I'll discuss matchups specifically towards the end or like after the deck profile section. Um, as for the event itself, it was super, super fun, and I had an amazing time just getting able to meet everybody, uh, including you guys, some of which who uh, just approached me and said hi and asked me to sign stuff. So shout out to all you guys and all the YouTubers who I finally got to meet in person, which was extremely surreal. So uh, thank you guys, everybody, for making the experience super, super memorable. I'm not going to forget this one for a very long time. But uh, enough chit chat. Let's go ahead and just talk about the deck right here so why did i play brave drag link i guess is the first question so i want to play the brave cards obviously they're extremely extremely strong um but i also want to play a deck that had a very coherent engine i didn't want to play prank it just because i didn't want to play a lot of mirrors but i wouldn't have played mirrors given the matchups that i played anyhow so maybe that was the right choice um but i felt like this deck's follow-up was really really strong uh, i had a lot of aggressive capabilities and you know you guys know me by now i'm a very combo oriented player so that's kind of how i like to roll and so that's pretty much it. I tried a list actually without the Brave cards, and I wanted to play like a DPE Dragon deck, which uh, in hindsight maybe was better, but I still think the Brave cards have like so much value, and it was almost trolly not to play them. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and just uh, dive right in here. So starting off, we're going to begin with the, you know, kind of the quintessential part of the format, which is just hand traps. So we're playing a lot of them. Uh, we're playing three Ash, three Ogre, three Valor, uh, three Imperm. 3 in the Biru, and then we're playing the Gamma Package. So we're playing uh, 18 Hand Traps, and this is 19 slots of the deck. Yeah, the format kind of necessitates it right now. I don't see this changing anytime soon as far as just like this many uh, Hand Traps and 60, which I am playing 60 cards. Um, that's kind of just necessary to be all the Brave decks right now, and you know a lot of the format is Brave. So until the format changes, I, I think we're going to be seeing this even post the uh, Alabaster Structure deck, unfortunately. I think you'll be seeing this high hand trap count continue to be a trend. Uh, I had no complaints with this hand trap lineup, honestly. I wish I drew some of them more. Like, I didn't really draw Ogre at all, um, but I drew Gamma quite a lot, and that card was very, very strong and overperformed. Maybe one change I would make is I would consider playing uh, Droll in the main, just because, like, there are a lot of, like, really, really uh, solid, like, combo mirrors uh, that I want to stop. Even, like, the uh, prank deck, it's decent into, um, just because, like, you don't get the full value of the adventure package since they're always trying to chain block first before going for the Griffin Rider in that deck specifically. And in most decks too, like they want to, you know, get value. Um, so yeah, I think that's maybe a card I would consider, but the, yeah, the engine still is relatively bulky. So I didn't want to cut into, uh, you know, the engine too, too much with this hand trap lineup. So I stuck with this and it was pretty solid. Uh, not really any complaints here. So that is it for these cards. Uh, next up is going to be uh, the starters. So there's 22 starters. Um, so we have three copies of Enchantress, uh, three copies of Right. Oh, also shout outs to my friends, uh, before I forget, uh, Nick, Josiah, and Gabe uh, lent me a whole bunch of cards. I don't own any of these Brave cards. I actually don't own a lot of the Dragon cards either. Um, so yeah, three Enchantress, three Right, three Black Metal, uh, three copies of Tracer, uh, three Quick Launch, three Chaos Space, and then we played, let's see if I can get everything on frame here. We have Foolish Burial, we have One for One, and then the last starters, so to speak, are Two Fusion Destinies. So uh, these cards are all individually very powerful. Um, they're all synergistic, of course. Uh, one of the problems I had with this list is that uh, you miss out on a card like Safer, which you could arguably play, or arguably play one of, um, just to be able to summon off of like Seal if you get Nibiru or even on their turn. Uh, and it's like decent like with Ravine and Levy and stuff. Um, but I didn't have enough space to play like a whole ton of like the utility dragons I wanted to, which in this build, safe it would be more of a utility dragon than a starter card. Um, but of course, Black Metal does not conflict with the Brave Engine, which is what makes it the ideal candidate for the normal summon. And these cards are all just crazy. Uh, one thing that happens a lot is that when you do get hand trapped, like say Ogre on your Fateful Adventure, um, you're using the token for other purposes. So like one of the strengths of, I think, this deck is that it gets to make use out of um, just the entire uh, Brave package when you do get stopped. 
uh, in terms of like syncing the token with Tracer to make like Chaos Ruler and stuff, which is like one of the big aspects. You can like Tracer pop Draco back, which is pretty strong. Um, keeps like boot on field and things like that. And I think that, um, you know, as strong as it is to use like the, the Brave cards as like a chain blocking mechanism, which this like, can sometimes do as well, um, or just as a way to ensure your board is secure with Griffin Rider, I think that's equally as strong, if not more powerful, to be able to actually use those cards to combo and to establish your end board. And I think that this does this very nicely. Um, so yeah, all these cards are ridiculous to draw. One for one especially is really good because I am actually playing uh, Brotar in my list too. So we have Black Metal, Rackets and Ground, and Brotar, which are all really, really solid targets. Um, so yeah, these are all cards that, you know, if you see in your hand, you are, you're chilling, you want to see these cards. So yeah, like I mentioned, these are all the starter cards, there's 22 of them. And that leaves us with 41 cards total, so the remaining 90 cards are just like the extra things to kind of like fill up the deck in terms of extension and just like engine requirements and some utility cards. So, uh, superior extenders, we have Red MD, uh, Clap Serpent, Wyvern Burster, I guess this is more of a superior extender than this one, but... Um, with how quickly you can go into Chaos Ruler, uh, I think this is often an extender as well. And then we have uh, Distributor that I decided to play as well. Uh, this card's a good send-off Ravine. Uh, it's good to hard draw. Um, like it's good in like niche scenarios where you want to make Halka Firebacks with your Brave stuff, um, but like you get stopped on um, something like I don't know. Uh, like maybe you get stopped early like with your Strike Your Dragon and you need like an alternative line into just like the Hulk stuff. Um, like this, this could uh, get you there. Um, you just kind of like pivot out of the rocket stuff if you like don't open it. But yeah, this card was pretty good as well. And then that's if like the real superior extenders, not a lot of them, but all the starters act as superior extenders as well. Um, so yeah, like these cards are all very, very good. Uh, and then next up for, I guess, additional extenders, we got uh, Fateful Adventure. Uh, we have Griffin Rider, which is really good in this deck because it is a Wings Beast to make Romulus with. Uh, and that uh, can come up. Didn't come up in the main event at all, but it's pretty solid. Uh, Rocket Synchron, which is at one here because, like, the follow up is um, if you have the adventure stuff rolling, then like this follow up becomes a bit weaker, and like it's not really a grindy format right now, so you don't really need a whole like ton of different like rocket names. I think the one was fine, I didn't miss a second. Uh, we have Recharger, uh, Crazy Card, I cut abs to one as well, uh, just because I was actually breaking on this card a fair bit because we are not playing as much of a rocket centric build. Um, I figured that this was fine to cut down, even though it is like a good discard off like Fateful Adventure and stuff. Um, you're not always going to see those cards in your opening hand. There's only like seven Brave starters. Um, so yeah, I felt like this was one of the cards that was contributing to like the, the dead hand. So I want to cut down on it. And then we also have uh, Brute Sector Launch, Dragon Ravine, uh, and then we have the Red Rose Package. Uh, so we have Red Rose Dragon, the Roxas Dragon, and the Basil Rose Shoot. So yeah, you notice there's no snow in this list. Uh, I cut snow because I felt like Let's be honest, most of the time you're not full comboing in this format. And if you are, then you don't actually need the snow to solidify your board. Like, you can do a different play where instead of going riser, you can actually just uh, straight up summon the Rox Rose, turn that into a Pixie, or yeah, turn that into Pixie, then Basil Rose shoot back and then make Triple Burst there. And then you can go ahead and go like Pissy, bring my Tracer, and then go into Ferratic Seal. And then like you can Tracer, go ahead and pop like the, uh, the Draco back that's now on field because you left the token up, and then summon the Recharger. And then you can go ahead and use the token and the tracer to go into Chaos Ruler. And that guarantees that you can like summon Chaos Ruler and go ahead and make the Verite afterwards without having to like rely on, you know, an extender hit, being hit off a ruler or like not using your normal summon to get to that point, uh, which I think, you know, is a pretty idealistic case. Uh, so yeah, I think that like I didn't miss snow at all. And I think this was fine. Honestly, these cards are kind of the flex spots. You don't really have to play the Rose Dragon engine just because. If you do get hand trapped, it's very unlikely that you're actually going through these, and they were always sided out going second anyways, unless if I felt the matchup was going to be grindy, which was very, very infrequent. So um, yeah, this performed decent, but I think these were the weakest parts of the deck for sure. These three were the weakest cards uh, in this deck. So if you want to cut anything for maybe additional hand traps or just stronger dragon cards, like maybe you want to bump the rock account up or play stuff like, you know, safer to knock division, uh, that is totally fine. And then we have uh, what you know, we like to call a reactive extender in Omni Dragon Brotar. Um, this card is you know pretty solid. It actually came up quite a lot, uh, not only just off of like one for one or seal, but like you know straight up milling it off ruler is really really nice. Uh, just secures that you're not gonna you know like lose the game and like threatening Levianir is really really powerful. Speaking of which, uh, we have the Levianir right here as just like a bomb card. Um, this card is crazy good, and I don't really need to explain it too much. 
And then for kind of like a removal slash utility card, we have the Draco back, which is also kind of a brick. But uh, this is what like this, this is what makes me want to play the Brave cards quite a lot. Uh, just because like this card going second is a lot of utility. One of the problems with the deck is that if you don't play the Rose Dragon cards, uh, for example, like if you do full combo, your combo becomes a little bit weirder because then like you wanting to leave the Griffin Rider on board. Either that or like you're going to be using like the, the token earlier as fodder, which kind of gets rid of your insulation. Um, so it, it's kind of like you have to pick between what routes you want to take. Uh, but like this also like just gives you a very, very solid option for going second as well. Um, and you know, this card breaks a lot of boards uh, in tandem with the rest of the engine. And then we have the DPE bricks right here. Uh, I actually didn't draw these too much. I drew Celestial uh, a fair amount, but I actually don't think I drew Dasher. So that's good. Actually, I hit Dasher off Chaos Ruler, which sucked, but I mean, that'll happen. So yeah, that is the 60 card main deck. And then moving on to the uh, extra deck here, we have Striker Dragon, uh, we have Pisty, we have uh, one seal. I didn't miss a second. Uh, again, the format's just not grindy enough right now. Uh, we have Romulus, we have Verte. Uh, Verte is ridiculous. Uh, one of the plays that you can do is that if you get nibbed on uh, these two cards on board, something you can do is if you haven't gone through the uh, the Black Metal Remedy package, you would summon the Remedy off of this, and then you use Remedy to bring back Striker Dragon, and then you turn the Remedy and the token into uh, the Dark Charmer right here, and then you go ahead, Striker, pop Dark Charmer to add back Recharger to bring back Verite, which is a cool play. Um, and that play uh, should have come up for me twice. It came up for me once, but it should have come up twice. Um, I kind of missed the line uh, where I could do it through Nib Ash, because um, you know, I was relying on like the seal resolving to like make the red MD that I had in my hand alive. But yeah, uh, that was like my one like fatal misplay that I definitely made. Uh, we have the one Hawk of Fibrax, uh, one triple burst like for the combos. Uh, we have Nightmare Unicorn and then we have the uh, access code talker right here. I don't know why I just framed it like this, but yeah, these cards all, all came up. They were all very, very solid. Uh, Dark Charmer especially is crazy. Uh, crashing that card to get to Levy near is a play that uh, is available very often and it does happen. Uh, and then we have Shooting Riser. So you may wonder why I'm still playing this card even without the snow. And that's because I'm citing uh, one token collector. And the game plan is against uh, Tenny Brave. You just do this and then you don't have to rely on Chaos Ruler milling you. So you can keep Ruler in your extra deck and then like just go ahead and skip a step and go into Verte afterwards. Um, also against uh, the Flanderies matchup, if you want to play around Dark Ruler, what you can do is you can send Lancey off this. And then you can uh, Baron tag out in standby phase uh, to go into Lancia. Um, and then you can Lancia your opponent right there. Especially, like, this will happen, like, if your opponent doesn't hand trap you, like, because if your opponent does hand trap you, then you're not usually ending on Baron, because, like, you'd have to expend Griffin, or you just don't get to Griffin in the first place. And so what ends up happening is that if, like, your Flunder opponent, you know, doesn't hand trap you, that means they probably have Dark Ruler, so you probably do want to play around that to some extent. And uh, that play didn't come up in tournament because I didn't play any Flunder either. So, yeah, uh, my matchups were really, really weird. Uh, Savage, Ruler, uh, these are all good. Uh, we have Baron, and then we have the boy himself, the DPE. So uh, I summoned everything in my extra deck. Uh, so yeah, they, these cards all came up for sure. Uh, I didn't miss Quad Boro particularly, but there were some times where I had the option to go into it. Um, so that is a consideration for sure. Um, side deck, we have uh, three Lancia. I spent a while on like just like siding patterns, and I realized that I stayed a lot of cards for the Thunder matchup because that... That matchup is very, very difficult for this deck, um, like the Dragon Link deck um, that does not summon a lot of stuff in defense position. And unfortunately, like the only real clear like main deck outs to M-Pen are like the Brave Engine, obviously. And then you have to like go for like Baron if you like are able to. Like, in the traditional Dragon Link deck, you have like Hot Red as an answer, but you're not always getting to Hot Red there. Um, so like you, you kind of want non-engine cards to help like solidify your ability to play against that matchup. Uh, three Joel for like the big combo decks, and it's like, also pretty good against Thunder. Uh, three Twin Twisters, good for Pranked, good for uh, the Thunder matchup as well. And then uh, one Droplet, which seems really weird, but it oftentimes is the sixth uh, additional go second card post side. Um, just the way my side and patterns worked out, um, it, I had space for this card, which offered coverage against multiple matchups, like even against like the less popular ones. Um, so yeah, just wanted to like have a hedge against. Uh, just like whatever matchups I needed to, because like I want I wanted to have at least twenty four going second cards in any given like combo matchup if I was going second, um, because that like makes the math to where it's over a sixty percent chance to draw two, and you really do need to draw two going second. Um, that's just kind of how the format is, 
And then if we're going first cards, we have uh, Tactics called by. I didn't draw called by at all, but I had drawn Tactics a couple of times, and it was very, very good. Uh, that card uh, performed really, really nicely. Just um, It was both times, actually, when it happened. I got drolled and I looked at their hand. I just either ripped their only starter or I ripped their other hand trap. It was really good. And then the last card, like I mentioned, is this Token Collector uh, for the Riser. And if you draw it, you're nice or hit it off Chaos Ruler. But yeah, that is going to be it for my deck. Uh, I think the deck itself was really, really solid. Um, so I'll run through my matchups here. So round one was up against Cyber Dragon. Uh, and I... Oh, also I should preface this by saying I lost every single die roll. <laughs> Literally every single one. So I lost a die roll, but he made me go first, which was kind of scary. Um, he ashed my uh, Enchantress, but I had Gamma in hand, which actually made my hand a lot better. So I end on a Seal, DP, Baron, Savage uh, with a Veiler in hand. And he couldn't break that. Uh, game two, he makes me go first again. And then he, this time he's able to Nibiru me, but I played around about breaking seal in the extra monster zone early. And then I believe, I don't remember if he hand trapped me a second time, but uh, I was able to end on a moderate board of like two hand traps plus like, uh, or one hand trap rather, plus Savage and DPE. And so I was able to love you and you rip a card too, which helped quite a bit. Uh, he super polyed my board into Starving Venom, which was like really unfortunate, but he couldn't kill me. So uh, next turn, I was able to use like my follow-up to be able to establish a board. Uh, I drew into Brave Engine off of the Celestial of my graveyard, which is really good. And uh, that allowed me to get into the game. I had the Griffin Rider summon as a fifth summon before he dropped his second Nibiru, uh, which was able to negate. And I couldn't go for game that turn because of that. Uh, but I was able to end on the Adventure Token plus the Halcony Extra Monster Zone plus the Red Rose. And then I went ahead and on his turn, when I summoned Cyber Dragon, uh, he had one of the card in his hand. I tied out the fiber, went into Riser, and I sent Veiler to make it a six. And I synchroed with the uh, six plus the token to go into Baron. And then that would just negate his last card, um, which I was fearing was Mystic Mind because I saw game one. But yeah, it, it was nothing. And so we won that one. Uh, round two was up against actually Phoenix Flare X on uh, Dragoonity. And that was pretty interesting as well. Now we lost a die roll. He goes first. Uh, I actually am somewhat acquainted with the cards, not entirely, but uh, I watched enough of his content to know at least what the basic premise of the deck is. And so uh, basically I let him combo until it gets to a point where he has Crystal Wing on board and he goes for uh, Savage Effect. And then he activates Savage, I chain to Biru. Uh, he chains Crystal Wing, I chain Valor, targeting Crystal Wing, but he has Call by the Grave, which really sucked for me. Um, so he ends on those two monsters, plus Seal in the extra monster zone, and he passes. Uh, he makes a misplay, uh, which he tells me afterwards, and that's he was supposed to grab Kuse at some point. Uh, but he grabbed double phalanx instead, uh, which uh, denied him uh, two more interruptions because he had the, the Dragoonity counter trap, but he didn't have anything to make it live. Uh, so his end board was actually breakable because I uh, had right plus uh, Enchantress. He didn't negate my Enchantress, but he negated my right with Savage and I just activated a second one. So I was able to go seal or attack over seal in the battle phase to force. And then uh, he negated my Griffin Rider in hand with Crystal Wing, and that was the last interruption. So uh, I was basically able to use the last card in my hand, which was Black Metal Dragon, to pretty much combo off and establish DPA control. And that was enough to win the game, even though he made a little bit of a comeback. Um, it wasn't like that much because I just had a lot of follow up with like Celestial and uh, Chaos Ruler and stuff. And then game two, we just bricked, which was unfortunate. But yeah, like he passed, and then he drilled me, and then I just tactics looked at his hand and saw it was weak, and I just ripped the Gamma. And they just played DPE control with Seal, and it was enough to win. Uh, round three was up against Avery Foster on Dogmatica Shadal, and he actually topped this event. Um, so yeah, I lost this one. Uh, he went first, and he normal summoned Gil Dagra, which confused me, because I, I just did not know what was going on. Like, what deck is playing Gil Dagra in 2022? But it turns out it's Shadal, and uh, that card's pretty good, because even though it got Veilard, oh, uh, he was able to go into Almirage Secure Gardener, go into Ecclesia, and was able to access the... Um, I would access the Schism anyways, so I got winded out of the game. Um, I was able to kind of make some plays where I Chaos Space pitched Nibiru to go for Love Unit to attack over it, but I was just never able to mount like actual pressure that game. And so, yeah, I lost uh, game one. Uh, game two, let's see, I won first, and I, I can't remember exactly what happened. I remember that I got hand-trapped a fair bit. And so, uh, yeah, I was not able to like really fully combo off and uh, he had some mechanisms to break my board. Uh, that game was a little bit foggy, but um, yeah, he played really, really well uh, into the board that I had, and he was like still able to establish Winda. Um, yeah, so that, that matchup was like pretty tough for me. Uh, I think that uh, I probably could have played game two better uh, because I know there, I remember there was a point where uh, I made a couple of incorrect reads. So 
I remember my hand was, yeah, it was like a bunch of hand traps, actually. Now I rem- actually, now I literally remember. It just came back to me. So my hand there, I believe, was Ash, Gamma, Valor, uh, Black Metal, and Tracer. So I am playing around a beaver here, um, just because like that, that can easily accommodate it. So I make Seal pretty early uh, after I go through the Black Metal line. And then I go Boot Summon Tracer, and then I... This is the game where I went to Ruler, and I hit Dasher off Ruler. Uh, I should have just gone into Verite into DPE. Uh, yeah, Ruler was not the right play there um, because yeah, it, it just was incorrect. Because even though I went through the Red MD play, and if I got nibbed on Verite, it would have not been like the most ideal. Uh, I actually think he was bluffing Nibiru because like he was very audibly counting my summons. So I should have just like called his bluff and gone for Verite instead. So I think that was my first misplay. Uh, my other misplay was uh, I made just some wrong reads where I played too hard around Shadow Fusion. Uh, and then he ended up not having it, so I like bounced my own ruler with seal. Um, and then there was another point where uh, he like crashed his monsters into my monsters, so I thought he had Mystic Mind, but it turns out uh, he needed just the extra secure guard in his graveyard that he crashed into to summon Dogmatica Maximus, which he hard drew. Um, and he main deck three of that card, and I did not know this from game one. Uh, like he already went through the first one previously, and then like that was the second copy, which totally caught me off guard. Um, so yeah, I, I made a couple of misplays, but also like it was an uphill battle against like. Winda plus just like protection for Winda because he had a whole bunch of hand traps to stop me as well. Um, so yeah, I lost that one. Uh, and round four was up against Tenny Brave. I won that one 2 1. Uh, game one, he went first. Again, I lost a die roll. Uh, he makes his combo. I gamma the Griffin effect in hand, so it cuts off a level seven body, which is important for him. And so he ends on a board of Chi Shell plus Blackout. Uh, and I believe he has a hand trap in hand and I'm able to play through it. And basically able to establish DP because I hard your fusion destiny because um, like you know we're, we're too good I guess uh, and yeah DP control was really really good against his follow up because like all he really had was like enchantress and grave and uh, like he had just a whole bunch of um of brave stuff like I couldn't clear everything that I needed to um, which was a little bit weird because he like at heart or he had uh, at heart and grave so he's like, able to add back a Shuna and he drew a Moye so he he was able to like establish a little bit um, but. Yeah, he wasn't able to actually fully come back into the game, and he just ended on a Shaofeng, and obviously that's not enough against DPE plus Lustial and Grave and like a whole bunch of follow-ups, so I uh, win game one. Uh, game two, he goes for a similar setup uh, to where I Ash the Fateful to search a Griffin Rider, and then he ends on, actually ends on a bit of a different board. He has uh, Chi Shell, I think he has Chi Shell Blackout still, but he has like a, like some other different monsters, like he went Hag t- or Hulk Tag out. Um, but yeah, he had two hand traps, like he Ogre Member Bean, uh, which he also did the previous game, but I think he also had a Valor at some point for, or it was either Valor or Ash. Um, so yeah, that one I couldn't break through. And then game three, I was able to go first and he hand trapped my, or he Ashed me at some point. Um, I can't remember what card he Ashed, but I do remember I was still able to like combo off pretty substantially ending on like. A seal plus DPE plus I believe Savage, and then I had a uh, hand traps to back it up. Yeah, so that one was getting pretty close to time, but I won it anyhow. Um, so yeah, like, it was risky because I had to use Destrudo and I had to use I've got to side out Destrudo and I had to use the Verite as well. So I went down to two K, but thankfully my opponent was very very uh, nice about it and like didn't scum me in time. Um, because like it was like about three minutes left on the clock when I won, so it was cutting a bit close, but uh, we got there in the end. Uh, and then round five was where I started to go a bit downhill here. Uh, so I played against the Blessing Wilson, a really really cool player, um, and really nice guy. Um, he was on Phantom Knight, uh, so he goes first. Again, we lost die roll. Uh, he goes ahead and scythes me game one because I only drew Valor against his hand of Torn Skill Boots, which is obviously not going to be enough. Um, so we lose that one. Game two, uh, we open pretty playable. He draws me. And then I tactics still get his hand, and I see it's Dasher, Shade Brigandine, Griffin Rider, and Fateful. So I just rip the Fateful, and he like pretty much scoops uh, on the spot just to save time, uh, which we had a lot of left going into game three. Uh, look at my hand game three going second, and I see no hand traps, and I think that I'm screwed. But uh, he actually doesn't open well either, so it's actually a winnable game, and this is the one that I misplayed really hard in. Uh, so he goes normal summon gloves, make Almirage, gloves send boots, boots add the Shade Brigandine, activate Shade Brigandine, turn that into Link Spider, make Verity, make DPE, set two pass. So he has two set, two in hand, and then DPE on board. And so my hand's really, really good. I start with Enchantress, add right. I go right, he chains cross out, to, uh, declaring his own right. Um, so that shuts off my own engine, but I still have a lot of dragon plays, so it's not a huge deal. I go normal black metal, I go into striker dragon, I add red MD, and then I have the relay as nib. 
Uh, so I actually hold the Red MD for the play I was describing earlier with like, if you get into B Rude, you can go ahead and like Red MD bring stuff back. Um, so I didn't want to banish my Striker Dragon for that reason. So what I do instead was I go ahead and boot summon out the hard drawn tracer that I had. I special summon the abs router that I hard drew, and then I went to seal for the fifth summon. And then afterwards, what I should have done was I should just tracer pop the boot sector to go into a recharger, and then go into chaos ruler, which would have forced to set fog blade, and then quick launch afterwards to go into verite, which would have forced to Nibiru. Um, but what I do instead was I go a bit greedy where I activate quick launch on the board of tracer. And then I chain quick or chain tracer did the quick launch, targeting quick launch to go summon out recharger and then quick launch resolves resolving or summoning out tracer. So like I kept the boot on board, kind of like prioritizing a bit too heavily in a format that's not very grindy, like I mentioned, especially like in a match like PK, where they're just gonna kill you as soon as they can, uh, even uh, still with like their DP follow-up. Oh yeah, also I added the DP with a top deck imprim. I should have mentioned this. Um so yeah, what ends up happening is that on that board of like double tracer, recharger, seal, uh, he nibs me and then he ashes my seal, which was something I, that caught me off guard quite a lot because uh, he knew my hand at that point was red MD plus Synchron that I searched off abs, so I couldn't do anything. What I should have done was, again, I should have just gone to Chaos Ruler with uh, Tracer Recharger, Hell Quick Launch in hand, and then go into Chaos Ruler, which uh, he said, like we kind of went over this as a simulation afterwards, but uh, we ran it back and then he said that he would have fogbladed my Chaos Ruler. Then I would go quick launch to summon out a monster, go into Verte, and then he would Nibiru Ash me here, but that's fine because I'll have Chaos Ruler in Grave. I have a seal for a light monster in Grave, so I can just banish the light in the dark, bring back Chaos Ruler, banish that for Red MD, Red MD to bring back Striker, and then I can do the same play that I mentioned. Uh, or alternatively, I could just simply go into Dark to steal his DPE, um, which would have been very, very nice as well because uh, he chained his DPE to my Imperm to get it into the Grave. Um, so yeah, that was the game that I definitely hardcore misplayed him, and uh, that's one that I'll for sure own up to as like, it's not the deck, it's just me being bad. And then round six, it was just pure variance. I had to play against uh, my guy Pete. Uh, shout out if you're watching this, I kind of doubt you are, but uh, yeah, Pete was playing Cyber Dragon, so I played two Cyber Dragons and pure Dragoonity, zero Prank, zero Flunder, uh, zero Based, by the way. Um, but yeah, he won the die roll. Chose to go first, and he sets up a board of Infinity, Dragoon, uh, Overflow, Imperm, and I know Hand Trap, so I lose that one. And then game two, I go first, I look at my hand, it's Chaos Base, Collapse Serpent, Wyver Burster, Absa Router, Ash, and then he lances me after I summon Collapse Serpent to play around Gamma because he saw uh, I drew a six card Gamma game one. So yeah, I made DPE, and then, because like, I'm under Lancius, I can't Chaos Space, I can't like summon White Dragon, I can't summon the Levy that I added off the Chaos Space, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm just normal summoning Ash and making DP and hoping that it gets there. Uh, and it turns out he just says Droplet anyway. So we went Droplet, summon Dragoon, Dragoon pop my DP, which is 2,500. And then with the uh, Verite on board, that's 35, so that's uh, 6K. And then I pay 2K for Anaconda, so it was just game straight up. So yeah, that one, I don't think there was a whole lot I could do about that match. Uh, I literally just could not play the game. Um, and, you know, it does happen. So yeah, those are my matchups. Again, I don't think the deck is at all a bad choice. I think it's actually very, very strong. Uh, and I ran it back into 3v3, which I guess I can run through my 3v3 matchups as well. Again, I played with uh, MBT and DZ, so that was pretty fun. Uh, Joseph played uh, Flunder, and then Doug played uh, the Sword Soul Tiny deck. So yeah, um, round one, well, they kind of operated a little bit weirdly to where they didn't cap the event at 32 teams. What they did was they lent 35, but they had to play kind of like a preliminary round to just eliminate three teams from the pool to get it to a uh, basically a number that's a power of two, um, because that's how like single elimination works. It was a single elimination tournament. So uh, we didn't have to play in that one, thankfully. So I guess it was a round one buy, if you want to call it that. Uh, but the real round one was... Uh, I was up against Prankid Brave, which finally got to play Prankid. I was preparing so much for that deck, and I didn't play any of it until the 3v3 side event, of course. Um, so game one, uh, I, I believe I actually also finally won a die roll, which was pretty fortunate. Um, so he hand traps me at some point. I can't remember exactly how this one went down. Uh, because like it, it was harder for me to remember these matches, because I like also it's a 3v3, so like you're looking at your teammates' uh, matches as well. Um, so yeah, Joseph played against Hero, and then Doug played against the Live Twin who bricked. So like Doug won in like five minutes, um, just because like the Live Twin player actually just bricked two games in a row, which is unfortunate. But yeah, I was able to combo off game one, and then uh, he didn't show me his Pranked engine. Uh, he just showed me the Brave stuff, which I was able to deal with. And then game two, he Pranked, comboed me, and I make a bit of a misplay actually on my turn where I should have forced out his Pandemonium. 
Uh, I buffed Nibiru to actually successfully because uh, he didn't commit harder when he could have. Um, so he ended on like Pandemonium. He didn't do like Bow Wow or anything. And he ended on like, like six cards in hand, I think, uh, which I knew he added uh, the fire one back. And so I'm like, okay, what are the odds I actually just hard drew the green one? Um, and so I kind of just played uh, my turn and just kind of like tried to combo as much as I could. Um, he ends up ashing me on my quick launch, which was like pretty good, but not enough to stop me from playing. Um, like this is after he battle butlered, uh, which he only had one pop since he put back his uh, Miyamu. Um, but yeah, he like battle butlered me at some point. He ashed my quick launch and then he ghost belled my red MD, which is my follow up play. And uh, that was enough to steal the deal. If I just got into battle phase at some point to force pandemonium, um, then it would have been fine because like he would have battle butlered me at a really, really bad time. Uh, or, uh, you know, like I would be able to like deal with the threat a bit more like readily. So, uh, yeah, I think that's probably what I should have done in hindsight. But uh, game three, uh, I believe he lances me and then he ogres me. Uh, but it was not enough for me to uh, to not play. I'm able to end on uh, DBE plus ogre ash, um, and so I was able to deal with the uh, brave stuff and the prank stuff pretty reliably because he just ended up getting a chain block with. So the ash was able to take care of that. Because um, like he forced my DPE with a hard drawn Draco back, um, but it was fine because I was still just able to go ahead and use my other hand traps to uh, inhibit his play. And uh, Joseph lost to the hero guy. <laughs> and then round two, uh, I played up against uh, the Cyrus Eldritch deck, which is another deck that I was kind of expecting to play in the main event, but uh, didn't. So we lost a die roll. I think all three of us actually lost. Um, and so he goes first. He scythes me. Um, but I actually am able to play through it a bit because I drew Brave cards, uh, which is like one of the advantages of the Brave cards is that you can you can actually play a little bit through Scythe against that deck specifically because it's not guaranteed to kill you. And he actually didn't kill me. He put me on 200. Um, but I make a bit of a misplay where I set my quick launch thinking I would need it to maybe like uh, chump block a little. Um, not thinking he would be able to go to Axis Code with the amount of monsters he had left because I, I cleared all of his board except his DP that was coming back and a Scythe. Um, but he it turns out that he drew into Firewall Guardian uh, so he summoned it off of uh, Dasher, and then he was able to go ahead and like normal summon another monster, and then he like also drew in a dot or a dotscaper off the uh, off the Celestial, which um, even though I had Griffin, like he had DP, just answer my Griffin anyways. So, uh, yeah, he was able to like go all the way in Access Code, which like was unfortunate because then my Quick Launch was you know destroyed, and I only had one for one recharger left in or one for one Synchron left in hand, and so he put me on two hundred. Uh, play passes back to me. I draw Fusion Destiny, which is really big. So I go normal uh, the recharger because I don't want to like one for one to summon out Brotar to get rid of Fusion Destiny because like that's my big play is Fusion Destiny. And I still have to like answer DB plus like one of his set cards. Um, and then I go into Striker, add Brute, and I Brute summon back from Grave. Uh, and like he doesn't do anything here. He imperms my Dark Charmer. And then I just go ahead and activate Fusion Destiny. And then uh, we just kind of DB trade. But uh, he ultimately, or ultimately ends up uh, having access to another cyber scadget, uh, which put too many bodies on board for me to deal with because uh, I had Dark Charmer DP versus like his three monsters and he was going to be able to game me because I had 200 light points. And um, like if I like waited for him to like commit into like a different link to with like the souls that he brought back and the cyber scadget, then like he gets a token and he also gets to go like and maybe into Dark Charmer and just like do a whole bunch of stuff. So um, yeah, I think I just lost that one uh, after he made the uh, mistake of just not sending quick launch. Um, and then, or setting quick launch when I shouldn't have, rather. Uh, game two, uh, I went ahead and he veilered me at kind of an inopportune time because he wanted to drop it for Griffin, uh, but I was able to just full combo um, and like looked at the hands because uh, that's when both uh, Doug and Joseph unfortunately lost um, to Tri-Brigade and to, uh, it wasn't Cyber's Elderwitch, but it was like Cyber Synchro Pile, uh, respectively, uh, which was unfortunate, but. Um, yeah, like Doug made it to game three, but uh, the guy just had like all the answers and then Jason just kept breaking, uh, which is unfortunate. So I never got to play game three there, um, so I don't know what would have happened, but uh, it was a pretty good match. Um, so yeah, again, I think the deck itself was very, very good. It's pretty hard to pilot though. And I think that if I was given uh, a chance to maybe play against uh, some more meta matchups in the main event, things maybe would have gone differently, but also like I could have played better, obviously. Uh, and so, yeah, that's going to conclude the tournament reports. Uh, I think that's longer than the deck profile section of the video, actually. And finally, they wrap things up. Why have I been gone for such a long time? So I owe you guys an explanation. Uh, basically, uh, it's a combination of burnout and also kind of lost interest in like the Master Duel side of things, uh, like entirely lost interest in Master Duel. 
uh, which was like where a lot of my kind of like momentum was at. And I kind of put a lot of stake in the Master Duel. I like dropped TCG quite a lot for like the beginning, like month and a half there. That Master Duel was actually like pretty good. Um, and so like my knowledge of TCG was not very, very solid. And I felt like I wasn't really super qualified to actually make good content on the TCG just because I wasn't really practicing it very much. And so I was kind of like not really super uh, interested in the game a whole lot. Uh, but I started going to events a bit. I went to the Philly Region a couple of weeks ago. I played Goki. Uh, which was fun. I was going to play actually this deck, uh, but my friend who was going to borrow the Brave package from actually wanted to play Brave himself uh, at the event. So obviously they're his cards. So I need to scrounge together a list that I could play and I just played Goki. Uh, I went 7-3, which is funny because uh, that's actually better than what I did at the YCS. And I also played more meta at the Philly Regional than I did at this YCS, which is, I think, just bad luck on my part. Um, but yeah, it, it was a combination of just like not really being like super motivated uh, to make like content uh, and also just like not being super interested in the game. But right now I'm like super recharged, uh, especially with the uh, Despia stuff and the Alba Strike uh, structure that coming out in uh, later this week, rather. Uh, I'm not going to necessarily play it myself. I'll test it for sure. But uh, I do want to prepare really hard for Hartford. Uh, and I want to do like super well. Like I, I felt like this event, I, I got, I didn't get robbed. I, I don't want to say like that, but I didn't get to play what I prepared for, if that makes sense. Like, I prepared for an entirely different game than I played, right? Like, I, I didn't prepare against Cyber Dragons and Pure Dragoonity. I play, I prepared for, you know, Based and Tranket and Flunder, and I didn't play any of those. And, uh, like, the only decks that, like, I had, you know, some preparation against were the Tenure Brave deck, which I, I have plenty of preparation, though, to be fair, against that deck. And then also, like, Fair Knight is, like, kind of, like, on the periphery, so, like, that one was fair, but... And the other matchups were uh, not at all on my radar, and so I felt like I wasn't able to really demonstrate like my knowledge of the format, and so I want Hartford uh, to be able to be kind of like a redemption arc in that kind of respect. So uh, I'm back, and I will definitely be uploading content uh, for sure. Pretty much, I'm not going to be uploading Master Duel content at all in the foreseeable future, unless if they radically change the way that game is structured, because um, the game just doesn't have any like content that is catered towards competitive players and uh, you know, I am obviously on that side of things. So yeah, not really going to like upload anything, even like from the special events or anything like that, just cause like, I don't have any interest in it anymore. Um, I'll maybe come back to master duel if like they actually do go ahead and decide to shake things up in terms of like the competitive ladder and things like that. But you know, for now, yeah, this is how it's going to be. Anyways, I've rambled on far long enough. Uh, actually, I was only three minutes at the end here. That was fine. But yeah, that's going to be it for this deck profile and tournament report. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. Uh, and if you guys want to see any content, because I'm kind of like on a fresh slate now as far as like what content I'm making, because I don't really have anything right now, um, feel free to let me know as well. Uh, maybe I'll upload some testing sessions with, with like some friends and stuff. And just, uh, I don't know. I have no idea what I'm doing right now, actually. I just, I just want to get back into content. I'll make something. But yeah, thanks guys again for sticking around with me uh, through another like, long or month long absence like th this shouldn't be happening as often as it is but it is what it is um thanks guys again for being here and until next time i'll catch you in the next video see you guys